A mother of five goes missing. They said, mom isn't here, we don't know. And they were crying, they were upset, and they were scared. Only to be found dead in her mansion basement. There's a woman hanging from the uh, shower. But investigators believe there's more to this apparent suicide than meets the eye. It looked like it was staged. What they don't know is that they're about to enter a twisted world of money. He had a lot of money. Power. He had been stalking her. And dark sex. He would put his hands down her pants behind her back. Don't let this picture perfect colonial in Virginia fool you. According to their oldest son, Nick, behind closed doors, Abralio and Michelle Castillo were struggling to save their marriage. They were good times, but they were also bad, strained a lot of the time. It wasn't always that way. Both wanted a big family. They adopted their first two children, then had three of their own. Together, they ran a highly successful IT business, and thanks to Braulio's status as a wounded veteran, were first in line for lucrative government jobs. So he's awarded millions and millions of dollars in contracts. In contracts. Mm -hmm. So he lived the life of oh, a millionaire. He was a millionaire, absolutely. The money furnished a lavish lifestyle, but it couldn't buy happiness. In April of 2013, Michelle filed for divorce and secured a protective order against Braulio. Verbal abuse, emotional abuse, sure. Yes, of course, I saw that. You know, the yelling, screaming, cursing, um, directed at her, directed at me. According to Commonwealth attorneys Alex Ruida and Nicole Whitman, divorce papers allege disturbing behavior. He locked her in a closet one time for a couple of hours, demanding that he have sex with her. She was always scared of him, and she told her friends repeatedly, if something happens to me, is the one that killed me. The Castillos were married for nearly 18 years, but before the ink on his divorce papers was dry, Castillo had already moved on. He was dating a triathlete. He also moved right down the street from his estranged wife. For her part, Michelle maintained an unbreakable bond with her kids and sought to rebuild her battered self-esteem. She was the best kind of mom you could think of, right? Somebody who cared about her children, always before everything else, um, before herself, before anyone. She, you know, got herself stronger. She was becoming a triathlete. You know, she, her, she was becoming stronger in mind. She was becoming stronger in body. She was just a great person, a, a caring, loving, joyful person. So what caused Michelle to fall into such sudden despair that she would take her own life? March 19th, Michelle and Braulio met that afternoon to finalize terms of their divorce. I know that she was seeking somewhere in the neighborhood of fourteen dollars to $17,000 a month in child support. His uh, divorce attorney kept wanting to negotiate as part of the divorce settlement that she withdraw that protective order. She was adamant that that protective order stay in place. And in fact, when uh, he had visitation with the children. He was not allowed to pick them up or drop them off at her house. That's how I mean, dangerous. That's how dangerous she thought he was, and that's how scared she was of him. But the court's decision is delayed. Later that evening, Michelle picks up her children from a visit with Braulio. She was out with her friends celebrating the fact that she had just qualified for the Boston Marathon and had just days before completed running her first triathlon. Michelle put the kids down for the night, set the security alarm, and went to bed. According to lead investigator Mark McCaffrey, the children woke the next morning and called their father in a panic. They said, Mom isn't here, we don't know, and they were crying, they were upset, and they were scared. Because of his restraining order, Braulio asks a neighbor to search the house for Michelle while he takes his kids to school. So he left, and uh, the neighbor thought this was so odd that he called, the neighbor actually called the police. Word of Michelle's disappearance reaches oldest son, Nick, who's away at college. I um, constantly kept calling because I was informed that somebody couldn't find my mom. Oh, I got a message and then I was, I asked if it was a joke because it wasn't, I said it because it's not funny. Um, and then I was told it wasn't a joke. Are you worried at this point? Oh, I'm freaking out. Cops arrive to search the home and make a gruesome discovery. Michelle is hanging from a shower head in the basement bathroom, an electrical cord wrapped around her neck. It looked at first blush, yes, as a, like a suicide. There's a woman 
hanging from the uh, shower. The children told me that they had searched the basement, but later on it was pretty apparent that they did not search the entire basement, and I think that's merciful that that didn't happen. And I can't imagine what would have happened had one of them seen her. And, and I'm not sure, to be honest with you, that one of them didn't. They say they didn't, but they said they also looked for their mother. Detective McCaffrey has the solemn burden of calling Nick. And I knew what he was going to say before he said it. You did? Yeah, it's one of those things where it, it was just a gut feeling. So I knew what was happening. I just didn't want it to be true. He's, you know, a 19 or 20 year old boy away at college, supposed to be having the time of his life. And next thing he knows, he gets a phone call that his mother's dead. And they took him straight to see his siblings and he was the one that had to give them the death notice. And I told them that, you know, that things are going to be okay. It's okay to be sad. It's going to be really hard to hear, but mom is dead. And she's, she's not going to come back, and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry, because I, uh, we couldn't do anything. But something about this suburban tragedy doesn't sit well with investigators. Her, she was forward, and her hair had been pulled in front of her face and the ligature was pulled around and on top of the hair and pulled. That's painful to begin with. People don't do that and I've had lots of suicides. I've, I've, I've never seen anything like that. It looked like it was staged. It looked like something you would expect to see at some haunted house or something. It looked very surreal. But who could have staged it? The house was locked all night, the alarm set, and Michelle made certain that her embattled ex did not have the code. It was odd. Up next, a grainy snippet of surveillance footage surfaces that could turn a suicide into a murder.